It's the same. I mean, a lot of families are pressures of today. They can't cope with them. And they react in this way. They sort of give up. And in many cases, you know, there's a father here, or stepfather, who suffers from heart trouble, can't cope. So he has to seek assistance. Oh, Fred, thank you. Some more. I thought I got enough for today. Never mind. <laughs> But these situations manifest themselves, you know, situations in a home like that manifest themselves in, in, um, in assaults of violence, kids going out and stealing, um, parents don't know how to cope with them. So again, this is where we brought into it. And we have to try and sort the problems out for them. Sometimes we're successful, other times we're not. But at least if we're successful with one or two, that means perhaps the future, it's one or two less criminals for the chaps to deal with later on. Um. Yeah, I think it is. If he doesn't mind the shift work, working weekends and so on, and deviations, and he doesn't mind pulling up, um, not putting, setting himself as a whipping boy, catching it from both sides, you know, these student rallies and things like that, where you're there to step between uh, two elements. I mean, the policeman catches it from both sides. Whatever he does, he's wrong. You know, he's a boy, he's a whipping boy. He's, uh, the, <laughs> he's there as a figure of the establishment and he's the one who catches it. And he's not allowed to have personal opinions and feelings. You know? And uh, these yobbo students uh, who are idle layabouts, most of them, who keep going from one course to another and don't want to work. These are often the agitators, in many cases, and the leaders of uh, these factions which cause trouble in student rallies, and they're the ones who take it out on the police. And then, if, you, if the policeman uh, shows, shows his human side of his nature, and perhaps retaliates in cases, then he's in the mire, you know, for retaliating. And then, from the establishment point of view, if he doesn't treat it right, um, the establishment gets onto him as well. So he catches it from both sides. But if you can put up with that sort of thing, well, all right, you've got to have a thick skin. And um, I must tell, I don't know. Because it doesn't worry me what anybody thinks, particularly. I don't lose any sleep over it. <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't be in this job now. I'd have left it long ago. <laughs> If they don't like it, they can lump it. Mm. But that's what it's all about. I think it's, it, is, it's, it is a good life. It's not quite as good as it used to be. I think there's more danger attached to police work than there used to be. There's more violence used towards policemen, certainly, than there used to be. Mm -mm. Well, this is a general trend in all fields. That, uh, you know, violence is sort of breaking out in all sorts of aspects. Trade union disputes picket lines and so on. Again, student rallies and protests. All sorts of odd factions, political, you know, <coughs> in this, well, what do you call them? Small political factions, left-wingers, Marxists, international socialists, <coughs> and all the other worms that crawl out from under stones. You want to uh, do away with the establishment. All right, the establishment has its faults and so on, but their solution is no answer at all. In fact, it's worse than the present establishment. It's been proved many times, isn't it? it proved to my satisfaction, anyway. What do you think the solution is? Well, I think status quo until they find something different. Well, certainly not, uh, not anarchy, and not a total totalitarian regime, which you would get if the international socialists and the Nazis took over, <coughs> with it would come the concentration camp, with people like that. And people who disagree with the views will be either shot, or disappear in some way or other, dropped in a bath of acid, or... Uh, hmm. Yeah. Can you make a knot of all this? <laughs> it's nothing to do with jail, oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, have another one.
No, no. I think they see it as a disadvantage, our two, because they've got the horrible combination, so they would think, of a teacher for a mother and a copper for a father. You know, as far as a kid's comes, he's got to live this down amongst his friends, really. And he's got to be tried to be one of the lads more than the ordinary child to give the impression to his peers that he's not part of the establishment. And that the people at large expect our children to be better behaved as a result of their father being a policeman and their mother being a teacher. So they expect perfect behaviour from them. So they do have a problem from that point of view, don't they? And we've said to the kids, you know, you know, you're a policeman's child and so on, and I'm a policeman, so be careful. Because <laughs> people are so much more ready to jump onto you, you know, if you put a foot wrong. And not, I'm not talking about anything serious either. You say, well, look, he's a policeman and not what he's done. And some neighbours are looking for it. And I wouldn't say in this district, but certainly one of the districts we lived in, in Accrington. Possibly. Yeah, well, there was one right opposite, wasn't it? Yeah. Very moved. Yeah, because her husband got locked up the day we moved in. And he wouldn't have got locked up but for his moving in because a policeman was helping to move in. And uh, there was a stolen excise licence on his motorcycle and the policeman noticed it. And uh, took it and showed it him. He tried to swallow it. The policeman managed to get out of his mouth, you know, when he, when he held the excise licence out. And he arrested him. And that was the last we saw the policeman who was supposed to be helping us move in. Well, of course, his wife wasn't too friendly with us after that, was she? Hmm? She was never friendly with us. She was never friendly. No. <laughs> no. She wasn't friendly at all. She used to make rude signs at the window. He's That's been it. in the police force over 25 years now, and in 25 years, the whole attitude of everyone has changed completely. The television, personally, I think is, is one of the things as well that it has affected it. But everyone's morals are not as strict as they were in those days. There's so much more pilfering goes on everywhere, isn't there? Mm. By people who would never have dreamt of doing this 25 years ago. We've a slight rundown, really, haven't we? And people are always trying to cheat the tax man uh, and things like this, which they wouldn't have done before. I suppose it's because you have to pay more and more taxes now that people want to evade that sort of thing, don't they? I try to. Probably I was something as a rebel when I was a young, youngster. I think I was when I was in the Navy. I, I can remember having leftish leanings politically when I was in the late teens, but later I changed. But I liked experience then. I think basically this is one of the problems with student uh, protests and so on. <clears throat> They've got the education at a fairly early age, but they haven't got the experience. Why did you change? I mean, what, what, what made you reconsider? I just, just living. You know, the experience of day-to-day -day life, family life, dealing with people. This made, probably made me change. Because if you're going to be a protester all your life, you're going to have a very unhappy life, aren't you? Obviously. <laughs> You're going to have people onto you, you know, the establishment particularly. Fish being locked up. You know. mm.